Thank you, Tim. Um, thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, so my thesis topic was uh, discrimination of sympatric species within the Tagus estuary. Uh, and I was looking at the native Agarosomus uh, regius and the invasive Cyanocyon regalis species. Um, so this is just an overview of my presentation and moving on. Okay, so many fish species uh, rely on acoustic communication to fulfill several functions which contribute to acoustic variability, such as advertisement and mediation of social interactions, for example, agonistic behavior, mating behavior. Um, there are over 800 fish species that are currently known to produce sounds. And all fish species are known to have inner ears that are capable of detecting sound. Fish calls are therefore a very important source of information for fish. Uh, for example, uh, fish calls can be used to recognize reprodu reproductive periods or to assess the welfare of fish. Um, and they are considered a tool uh, for monitoring of fish. Um, so here we have the two sh uh, shinid species that I was studying. Um, we have on the left Mega, uh, which is the Gyrosomus uh, regalis, and on the right we have weak fish. Um, shinids are known to produce pulsed sounds. And within the pulse sound category, the variability is usually mostly expressed in the time domain. So that is the duration, the number of pulses, uh, the pulse repetition rate. And um, this variability can promote rep reproductive isolation of closely related species, as well as enhancing mate choice or competitor recognition within the same species. Um, the temporal patterning of sounds uh, has been used before to promote species recognition within assemblages of closely related sympatric species. And in gobies, for example, pulse rate and duration has been used to differentiate groups of closely related species. Um, in recent years, uh, passive acoustic monitoring has been used uh, in the study of aquatic, aquatic and terrestrial soundscapes, and it's become increasingly popular uh, in order to learn about the nature of soundscapes. Um, it has practical advantages over traditional fish monitoring techniques. For example, it's relatively low cost and it's completely non-invasive. So no harm comes uh, to the fish when you're doing passive acoustic monitoring. Um, soundscape analysis is of great importance in the assessment of fish populations as well as habitat health. And for example, in Portugal, uh, the best known reproductive area is the Tagus estuary. Passive acoustic monitoring also allows uh, for monitoring of invasive species and documentation of their spread and determining if the presence of the invasive species could have an effect on the nat native species. So we come to my research design. So the aim of my study was to compare and distinguish sounds produced by the sympatric marine species, uh, the Cheyennes, which is the mega and the weak fish. The significance of this study is that analysis of the sounds of the mega and the weak fish may offer a viable method for some wide scale application, such as the monitoring of habitat health, the management of both the native and inv invasive species populations, as well as documentation of important biological processes such as breeding activities. So my study design involved comparing North America weak fish sounds that have already been documented with uh, Portugal weak, fi weak fish sounds from the Tagus estuary. So um, how I went about this was I compared uh, North America weak fish captive voluntary sounds at 21 to 23 degrees Celsius with Portugal weak fish field sounds from the Tagus estuary at 22 degrees Celsius. And then I compared North America weak fish um, captive distress sounds at 23 degrees Celsius with Portugal weak fish field sounds at 22 degrees Celsius. 
uh, as uh, previous studies have pointed out that distress sounds and field sounds are quite similar. I also compared North America captive distress uh, lab weak fish sounds at 18 degrees Celsius with the Portugal weak fish captive distress lab sounds at 18 degrees Celsius. Um, and this part has not yet been done due to some issues that uh, will be discussed further on. Uh, and now when it comes to comparing the two different species, I compared the sound features of um, North America weak fish uh, with uh, the Portugal meager sounds. Uh, so as to try and see if it's possible to use passive acoustic monitoring to distinguish, to distinguish between the two species in the field. So what I did is I compared the North America weak fish captive voluntary sounds at 21 to 23 degrees Celsius with meager captive voluntary sounds from the Tagus estuary at 22 degrees Celsius. And then I compared the North America weak fish captive distress sounds at 18 degrees Celsius and the meager sounds uh, from Portugal, captive distress sounds at the same temperature. Uh, uh, just for context, captive distress sounds are sounds that were made when handling the fish or when the fish were manipulated, whereas captive voluntary sounds are sounds that were made voluntarily by the fish uh, without them being handled, uh, but in an aquaculture context, so within the lab as opposed to being in the field. Um, now for my methodology. Um, so for the purpose of this study, uh, acoustic data sets, um, acoustic features of several data sets from previously published studies, studies were analyzed. And so I used a study by Pereira at et al from 2020, which was the source of the meager captive distress and the captive voluntary lab data from Portugal. And this was recorded in 2018. I also used three papers from uh, Martin Conotone and this was the source of the North America captive uh, distress and captive voluntary data. And this was recorded between 1992 and 1993, so quite a long time ago, but we were able to uh, have this data sent over and this data was what I was using uh, in order to do the comparison. In addition to this, I also used um, uh, data from the uh, loggers that were placed in the Tagus estuary to record breeding sounds in 2020 at the end of the breeding season. So this is at the end of July, stroke beginning of August. And these loggers recorded both weak fish and meager field sounds. Um, a high-tech hydrophone was anchored at about 20 centimeters from the bottom to a stainless steel holder and um, this was attached to a cable that minimized uh, hydrodynamic noise, and the signal from the hydrophone was recorded by a 16-channel standalone data logger. In order to record the uh, Portugal, the captive distress weak fish sounds from Portugal, um, an indoor tank about 400 liters was uh, filled with water and uh, sodium chloride was added to replicate saline conditions within the field. And the temperature of the water was maintained at 18 degrees Celsius using a cooler system that pumped water into and out of the tank and as well as a filter system that filtered the water into and out of the tank. However, because of initial uh, COVID restrictions in Portugal, uh, at the beginning of my thesis, I was not able to access the labs. And after the restrictions were removed for about two months, they have been trying to catch the weak fish and they have not been catching the weak fish. So it's only last, sorry, last week, um, Friday actually, that uh, they got this one weak fish that you can see uh, from the field and into the lab. and. So I am hoping that this week we can hopefully record some weak fish sounds and this data will, will be the Portugal weak fish captive distress lab sounds that we will use in the comparison. You can see the lab setup here. So you have the four.
500 liter tank and you have the uh, the little task come in the corner. So for the sound analysis that I did, um, the sounds were analyzed with Cool Edit Pro and Raven 1.6 software, and only the sounds with a good signal to noise ratio were used in the analysis. Uh, previously recorded sounds from North America were recorded at a sampling rate of, of 11.1 kilohertz, and so they had to be downsampled to 8 kilohertz with a 16 bit resolution, whereas the recorded sounds that were previously recorded from the Tagus estuary had to be upsampled from 6 kilohertz to 8 kilohertz uh, with a 16-bit resolution. And this was done in order to match the loggers that were recording the field data within the Tagus estuary uh, because they were recording this at 8 kilohertz. Um, uh, so for the spectrum and spectrogram configuration, uh, the sampling frequency used was 8 kilohertz. The FFT size was 1024. And I used 128 window points, Hanning window type, and I overlapped the samples uh, per frame at 50%. Temporal parameters measured from oscillograms uh, were sound duration, number of pulses, and mean pulse period. Whereas the frequency and spectral parameters that were important for this study were peak frequency. Um, here we see that uh, the oral and visual assessment of the spectrograms allowed for identification of two kinds of pulse sounds in the acoustic samples. So here we have the uh, weak fish and here we have the mega. And we can see that their sounds do overlap in the field and that even just by looking at it, you can see clearly that there are differences uh, between the two sounds. So for my statistical analysis, given that I am yet to submit my thesis, uh, further statistical analysis is ongoing. However, what I did first was uh, create correlation matrices based on the variables or the sound features of each data set, which is the uh, number of pulses, the sound duration, the mean pulse period, and the duration of the sound. And it was determined that the sound duration and the number of pulses were highly correlated in all the data sets. And in addition to this, previously published data uh, that used some of the data that I used in this study found that the sound duration and the number of pulses were highly correlated. And for this reason, I excluded the sound duration from the statistical analysis. Um, So um, the um, central limit theorem tells us that the sampling distribution tends to be normal if the sample is large enough. Uh, and we did have quite large samples of more than 30 sounds, um, even having samples of up to 100 sounds. Uh, so we performed, the plan is to perform two sample t-tests on some of the data sets that are greater than 30 sounds to determine if there's a significant different be difference between the means. Uh, for some of the data sets that don't have as many sounds, so the sounds are less than 30, we performed a Shapiro-Wilk -Wilk test to test for normality, and the results of the test show that some of the data sets uh, have P being less than 0 0.05, implying that the distribution of fish populations is significantly different from normal distribution. And so moving forward, the plan is to use a non-parametric test, which will be the Mann-Whitney test on these data sets. Uh, results, uh, as I said, I don't quite have conclusive results yet, as I am still doing the analysis. However, here, if you can look at the graphs, we do notice some difference between the mega uh, mean pulse period and the weak fish um, pulse period. Uh, and moving on, we also do notice some differences between the number of pulses of the MEGA and the weak fish. Discussion and conclusion. So, so far, the results demonstrate that there are differences in the sound features of both uh, sounds exhibited by the MEGA and the weak fish, and so show that it may be possible to monitor um, these fish species, the native and the invasive fish species, and distinguish them between 
uh, with their sound features. This could be useful in the future for managers when it comes to management and conservation of both species populations, as well as mapping of the different species in terms of space and time. Uh, further studies could also show if the acoustic overlapping of the two species could have an effect on the breeding process of either the meager or the weak fish. Um, however, at the moment, the results obtained are not final and analysis is ongoing. Acknowledgements, I'd like to thank my supervisor, Clara. I'd also like to thank Dr. Paolo Fonseca for his input and PhD student Manuel Vieira, who has been helping me um, with this uh, thesis. Questions? 